Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. You, O oh Lord, who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, as you might have noticed, we've been, uh, we've made a large skip today. We're in Mark chapter 9 all of a sudden, where we just finished chapter 1. We've spent a lot of weeks on all the different parts of chapter 1. Don't worry, we're going to go back and talk about all those other parts in between later on after Pentecost. Um, but right now, I want to focus on where we are with uh, the Gospel of Mark here at the beginning of chapter 9. First, right before this in chapter 8, Jesus has foretold his death and resurrection for the first time. So he shared with uh, his disciples that this is what's coming. And then after this story of the transfiguration in chapters 9 and 10, there's some healing stories and a couple teaching stories, and he blesses the children. But most importantly, I think, are two more instances of Jesus foretelling his death and his resurrection. And all of these things lead to the same event as told in Matthew's gospel, which is the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Luke writes about this transfiguration in his gospel too, but he puts a lot more in between all the stuff. Um, but Matthew and Mark, for them, the transfiguration is about this point at Jesus' life where his ministry takes a big turn. So, to this point, Jesus' ministry has been a lot about gathering, about teaching, about healing, about pulling everyone together, about calling disciples. After the transfiguration, Jesus' ministry takes a shift into preparing the people for a time when he will be gone. Therefore, he's, he's even told us three times, this is what's happening, I want you to be ready. He essentially prepares them for their baptism by the Holy Spirit which has been foretold by John the Baptist at the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark. So he's preparing them for their baptism by the Holy Spirit and this scattering into the world to spread the good news to all people. These mountaintop experiences like the Transfiguration really do feel good, don't they? And they, these are places where we want to stay. I'm sure many of you have had mountaintop experiences in your life. I've been very blessed in my own faith life to have quite a few, and, and um, I think it's probably why I'm a pastor. Um, but these mountaintop experiences, they feel safe, and they feel holy, and, and they're pretty, pretty darn close to being perfect, aren't they? Um, and this is probably why Peter's like, let's stay here, Jesus. Let's build three houses, and, and we'll stay here. This is a good thing. Even though he's terrified, he's like, but, but let's stay, even though I'm terrified, right? Wouldn't you want to stay in one of these holy, holy moments? But these mountaintop experiences are transfiguration. They are transformation. They're a time in which we gather. It's the gathering that gives us what we need to be able to scatter out once again into the world. We're not called to be gathered as much of the time in our lives as we are called to be scattered. If you think about the amount of time that you spend here in worship or with God's people or maybe a Wednesday evening uh, time or maybe even an outside service project here and there. But that time is much less than the time that we spend in all the other areas of our life. And in a new culture today, people aren't just coming to the church anymore. We're going to need to be going out to people to meet people where they are. And so it's with this in mind that we think about this uh, Life of Faith initiative that our faith formation team has taken upon. It's called the Life of Faith initiative, and we're going to be focusing a lot on it this Lent and into the future, months and maybe even years. Um, it's not a program, but it's really more of a reclaiming of our mindset about what our baptism is. And what, we are, what the place of church and this gathering is, the, its purpose and our own call to ministry. And in this baptism, in our baptism with the Holy Spirit, we are called to five things, which our parents answer for us if we're small children or infants. If we're adults, we answer for ourselves. And our confirmation students, at the end of their time of learning, 
they come up and they affirm these promises that they want to continue in this life that they're leading and these promises that um, this covenant with God that they've been um, a part of. And so these promises, if you want to look with me on page 236 in your hymnal, it's at the very front of the hymnal, uh, the numbers on the bottom of the page, not the big musical numbers in the back, but um, page 236 in the front of the hymnal, this is the service of affirmation for baptism. And we'll be doing this later on in May. We've got quite a few eighth graders that are ready for confirmation, and we're excited about that. But if you note, know, there are five things that we're called to, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through our word and our deed, and maybe sometimes that's together, and maybe sometimes it's only word or sometimes it's only deed. Uh, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Now, if you notice, only two of these are really specific to church, right? This is God's faithful people. Our, our faith community is where we live amongst God's faithful people, and we encourage each other and strengthen each other to be able to go back out in our lives where we're not all together. And we come here on Sunday, maybe Wednesdays sometimes, particular services, particular uh, classes that we take, or even in music. We come here to hear the word of God, and we come here to share in the Lord's Supper. And these are the things that prepare us then to go out into the world. The three other things are just as much about what we do in the rest of our life. And so this, living, this Life of Faith initiative is really all about celebrating what we do together here as God's faithful people gathered together. And this is our mountaintop or our transformative moments that prepare us then to go out and do the other three things. We come together as the gathered church and we go out as the scattered church. We come down from this mountaintop experience from our transformational moments. And in our baptism, we're called and sent out into the world to proclaim the good news with all the rest of our lives. This is what vocation is. Martin Luther talks about vocation. He uses the example of a shoemaker. He says, a shoemaker, to be a, to be his, for his vocation to be Christian, doesn't mean like he makes little crosses and puts them on every shoe, but what he does is he makes the very best shoe or the people that will wear them, because that's how he can serve other people. It's this Holy Spirit transforming us to live out our life of faith and ministry. And it's, you know, sometimes we hear the word vocation and we relate that to a particular job that we do, what we do to earn money, like nurse or doctor or uh, fireman or um, all those other things. But we also have other roles that are part of our vocation. Mother, father, brother, sister, sibling, cousin, friend, person out in the community. We are called in all of these roles in our vocation as Christians to proclaim the good news in word and deed, to serve all people as Jesus served, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. So if this is our baptismal call, a call to ministry in our everyday lives, we need to be asking every day, everywhere, with everyone we meet, what is my ministry in this moment, in this place, with this person? Or in other words, how am I proclaiming, serving, and striving in my work, my school, my home, with my friends, with the community, at the grocery store, even on the highway, with all our decisions. How am I seeking God and serving others with my life? Not just here, not just with our church family, but in all of our life. As the, gods, as the church of God scattered. So this is our call. This was the call of the disciples as Jesus prepared them as he was leaving. These mountaintop experiences strengthen us and encourage us and transform us 
to go back down the mountain into the world, into the thick of ministry. So let's go. Let's go down that mountain. Let's meet people where they are, and let's love as God has loved us. Amen.